Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and in this video we will be talking about the interview questions asked by PwC for a candidate of experience 4 years, okay, 4.5 years to be precise. This is the technical term, so this is the L1 and uh, all the questions are technical questions. I am just highlighting the major questions or uh, the questions which I want you your attention. Other questions were very basic and easy, so I am not, I am excluding such questions. Okay. So after the introduction, because it was for the experienced candidate, an interviewer started asking about the integration. Tell me about your integration experience, how, uh, uh, what kind of integrations you have done. Then ask a couple of questions on the rest integration, how does it work, authentication and authorization, couple of basic questions. Then the first question was, what is the refresh token? Okay. So a refresh token is a long lived token which we get uh, when our previous token expires without uh, user need, uh, need to log in again. So we need refresh token in our 2.0 flow whenever we uh, uh, do the integrations and there were a couple of cross questions related to the difference between access token and refresh token. Uh, I have already covered those in a separate short video. You can watch that video. I'll put the link in the comment section. Uh, then uh, the major question was what is the difference between uh, OAuth 1.0 and OAuth 2.0 or traditionally OAuth and OAuth 2.0 okay so both of these are authorization framework but auth 2.0 is the redesign of auth uh, 1.0 or traditional OAuth and it has several advantages over the traditional OAuth like uh, in auth 1.0 we will we will refer traditional oauth as 1.0 in 1.0 refresh tokens are not supported whereas in 2.0 refresh tokens are supported 1.0 is a single authentication flow it supports the single authentication flow whereas 2.0 has multiple grant side there are different types of authentication flow which are supported on 2.0 like auth code like implicit like client credential like password so there are various uh, authentication flows which are supported in or 2.0 Auth 1.0 is not optimized for mobile, whereas Auth 2.0 is optimized for mobile. Auth 1.0 is a heavy uh, flow, you can say, considered as a heavy uh, flow, whereas 2.0 is a very light. Okay. So these are a couple of basic, it's not like these are the only differences or you need to tell all the differences, but you should know the basic differences. So that is why I am highlighting those. Okay. The next question was, what is the difference between remote site setting and name credential? And this is a very common question in the integration. Remote site setting is nothing but where you whitelist the URL which you are going to call or you are going to hit a third party API. You will have to put that URL in the remote site setting so that that URL will be a authorized URL, authenticated URL and you will be able to hit that URL. Whereas in the name credential, along with the URL, you also store the auth details. Okay, and um, all it supports all the basic authentication. So with the help of name credential, you are not only just whitelisting uh, the URL, but also providing the authentication related details as well. So it solves a lot of problem because it is doing so many things in a in a single attempt. Okay. It is more secure, of course, because in the uh, remote site setting, because we'll have to again, we just whitelisted the URL. So we'll have to provide the credentials or authorized details somewhere in our code or somewhere from where we are doing the callout. So that will make it less secure. Whereas here, authorized details are stored within the name credential. So it is considered as more uh, secure than the remote site setting. Okay. Because we are just whitelisting the URL, there is no token management process in the remote site setting. But because name credentials support O or 2.0 flow, there is a token management system. All those access token, refresh token will be generated automatically without user being logged in again and again. So that is also an advantage of name credential. 
generally whenever we'll have to call the public api which do not have any authentication or authorization they are public for everybody we can use the remote site setting but otherwise if we'll have to take care of authentication and authorization we should use name prudential not just the remote site setting okay make it a thumb rule all right <clears throat> next question was what is platform event and when do we use it so platform event is a publish subscribe model based messaging system which allows us to do the asynchronous communication it is um, uh, it is nearly real time event driven architecture and it allows different system apps and processes to communicate asynchronously i have written the definition so that i do not say anything uh, uh, <laughs> wrong or uh, uh, anything uh, which is not factually correct okay so that was just the platform event definition we use platform events on multiple places sometimes within salesforce sometimes in the integration to communicate with different salesforce system or different uh, third party or uh, different middlewares as well uh, we also use uh, uh, platform events whenever we'll have to publish something where there are multiple subscriber who are going to listen to it so there are so many strings such attached on the platform events but uh, here uh, interview did not go very much in detail on that uh, more on the uh, this will be in the uh, second half of the interview then the question was what is the difference between future method and kubel apex here you will have to explain what future method is what kubel apex is and when to use which one they both have their own use cases though they both are asynchronous apex but they have their own use cases so if interviewer ask explain those use cases otherwise just tell them the difference uh, between future method and the kubel apex in kubel apex you can queue the jobs you also get the job it so that you can uh, see the processing of a job uh, in future method you do not get that okay we use future method whenever we have to avoid the mixed dml error or whenever we have to do the call out from the trigger we use future method okay then the next question was why we cannot pass the list of object uh, in uh, uh, in uh, future method and uh, what is the reason uh, so see the simple reason is that let's say future method because it is asynchronous we are never sure that when that is going to happen and when uh, this actually executes there are chances that your data might get changed in the back end so that is why salesforce is not allowed us to uh, do uh, that not allowed us to send the list of a subject directly as a parameter but uh, we pass the list of ids set of ids and then we query that and that time we get the uh, uh, the immediate data and then we do the processing so that is the workaround we do uh, to pass the s object okay then interviewer asks the candidate to write a trigger to count the number of contact associated with the account with the help of aggregate query so here he also told the approach to follow because there are there are multiple approaches by which we do the roll up summary trigger we use map sometimes we use aggregate query though aggregate query is a preferred way to do that here interviewer mentioned that you have to do it via the aggregate query if you want to see this roll up summary trigger i have a full video of this trigger where we have created this uh, trigger from very scratch uh, by first writing a non bulky file basic trigger and then we improved on that trigger in a single video you will get everything you can check out my uh, channel for that next question was what is the difference between lightning message services and pub pub sub model okay so lightning message services is the latest offering with salesforce where we can communicate between the different types of uh, component like between aura and lwc between vf page and lwc with the, with the help of lightning message services okay and pub sub is a uh, is a model uh, obviously it's a event based model which we used earlier to do the communication between the unrelated components okay so couple of uh, difference i am going to list here uh, which i have listed on my copy um lms works within the same page or browser tab uh, pub sub model event driven pub sub model is an event driven uh, between salesforce and external system as well okay uh, it uses the lightning message channel uh, in lightning uh, lms and um, pub sub uses the event bus 
okay so your message will be published in the event bus and all those subscriber will get notified on it okay in the lms uh, limited to the client side component on the same page lms is limited to the client side component on the same page whereas pubs of work across different user systems and sf instances as well so you can communicate between different instances as well um, in lms your message will not be stored anywhere whereas in the pubs of because it is based on the platform event and platform events do get stored for the 24 hours so you can replay them okay so that is these are not the only differences but to highlight couple of you can mention these if you get the question okay now next question is what is dome so dome is document object model it's a programming interface uh, that represents your H, uh, that represents your web page in a tree structure format uh, html or xml document so it represents your page in the node and tree structure format okay it is nothing but your web page but written in the xml or uh, uh, it represents your page or web page as a tree structure that's it can we update dome in the constructor no we cannot update dome in the constructor because uh, dome is not rendered yet okay we use uh, uh, we use constructor to initialize properties and setting up the dependencies okay if we have to update dome we can use the rendered callback that's the place where we should be updating the dome not the constructor okay this is an interview question you will get in many interviews so remember that then couple of questions were from the experience cloud what is experience cloud and how do we share record in the experience cloud so uh, here interviewer was expecting uh, us to tell the sharing sets what are the sh sharing sets uh, just like sharing rules, we have sharing sets we use to share the records in the community cloud. There were a couple of uh, other questions as well on the basics of what are the different types of communities, what is partner community, what is com customer community, uh, but those were very basic. Uh, how to create public sites? That was the next question. We create public site, we create the community site and then we make them public. So we have to enable the public uh, access in the experience builder we create the site go to experience builder make that site as a public or public access needs to be enabled whenever we create a new page we'll also have to set it as public and we also have to modify the permission for the guest user so that all the objects and things they can access otherwise they'll not be able to access even if that is public okay Couple of very basic questions on lead assignment rule, how lead assignment works, why opportunity is uh, uh, not created in every case, why it is not mandatory. Um, so lead conversion process, couple of questions were there, but they were very, question, uh, very basic. Next question was on the security model. Explain the security model here. Uh, the problem I see in many candidate is that they explain the security model from the org level security uh, from the project uh, object level security and from the record level security so they talk about profiles they talk about permission set then they talk about owd sharing rules manual sharing in role hierarchy but they do not talk about the organization level security they do not talk about securing your um, community side so also explain the organization level security what is ip access how do you make sure that your salesforce org is uh, uh, is secure other users are not able to access it through the apis how will you make sure that your um, uh, your api integration is not leaking the data those are also those things also come in the salesforce security uh, model so please try to explain them as well that is the thing i have seen missing in so many candidates try to uh, also include the organization level security in the consideration okay next question was user a is not able to see a record uh, what could be the reason so it's a very very wide question user a is not able to see the record could be uh, multiple reasons you will have to ask a lot of cross questions okay user a is not able to see the record of which object do user a have access to that object via profile or permission set is he able to see other records of the same object uh, is he owner of the records we'll have to first uh, categorize is it object level access issue or the record level access issue if 
uh, user A does not have access on object, then we'll have to think about, okay, we'll have to give it via profile or permission set. If he has access to object, he is able to access other records of the same object, then we will go to the record level uh, security and we'll see, okay, is he able to see other, is he, is he uh, owner of that record? We Do we have shared that record with him? Who is the owner of that record? All those kind of questions will be asked. So just categorize the question into record and object level security and then dig deeper into why he is not able to see, ask a couple of cross questions. Okay. If everything is fine, he has object level access, field level access, he, he is the owner of the record uh, or he record has been shared with him, still he is not able to see, there is a possibility that there are a couple of, uh, they, they might have created the restriction rules for this user. So that would also be the ultimate endpoint if you reach there. But try to eliminate one option after the other uh, till you reach the uh, answer interviewer is expecting. Okay. All right. Uh, next question is share button is not visible. What could be the reason? I have to hit a record, but share button is not visible. What could be the reason? Again, this is also a very wide question. There could be multiple reasons why share button is not visible. Uh, very major reason is sometimes OWD of that particular object is read write. So if OWD is already expressive, then we do not uh, need to share the record. So then, uh, then share button will not be visible. Sometimes user is not the owner of the record. So he do not have the share permission uh, for that particular record. Sometimes share button is not in the page layout. So that could also be the reason. Um, maybe manual sharing is not enabled that could also be the reason uh, sharing of the record is not available in all the salesforce instances so if you if your org is the professional uh, uh, e is enterprise or the higher edition then only you will have the option to share the record so that could also be one reason so you'll have to present multiple answers there i consider this interview was relatively very easy it started with the tough um, uh, questions on the integration but once interviewer was convinced that this is a good candidate the level of uh, questions kept on uh, kept on going uh, down because I think interviewer has already made up his mind in the very beginning after the integration related question that the candidate is a good uh, good candidate so that's how that's why you see that the level of questions kept on going down uh, throughout the interview so i hope you will learn from it uh, let me know if you want to discuss any question in the comment box and i'll be more than